And now on to our dinosaur of the day, Ornitholestes, and that name means bird robber. And Ornitholestes was a small theropod. It lived in the late Jurassic in western Laurasia, which is now North America. And Henry Fairfield Osborne described the skeleton in 1903. It was the first theropod discovered in the 1900s. The holotype was excavated by Peter Kaizen, Paul Miller, and Frederick Brewster Loomis. It's known from one partial skeleton with a crushed skull, which was found at the Bone Cabin Quarry in Wyoming near Medicine Bow in 1900. So the partial skeleton includes parts of the vertebral column, forelimbs, pelvis, and hind limbs. Later, there was an incomplete hand that was thought to be Ornitholestes, but is now considered to be Tanicolagris. And that was found only a few hundred yards away from Ornitholestes, which is why the hand was assigned to it at first. The type species, and only species, is Ornitholestes hermini, and it's named after the American Museum of Natural History preparator Adam Herman, who directed the restoration and mounting of the skeleton, and Theodore Gill suggested the genus name. In 1920, Charles Gilmore said Ornitholestes was identical to Silurus, and in 1934, Oliver Perry Hay said there was only a difference at the species level and renamed Ornitholestes Silurus hermini. In 1980, though, John Ostrom revived the genus Ornitholestes. So Ornitholestes was bipedal, and it was a carnivore. It had a head proportionally smaller than most other carnivorous dinosaurs. It had a short snout and robust lower jaw. It had conical front teeth, and its back teeth were recurved and serrated. And Henry Osborne said that there were four teeth in the premaxilla. Gregory S. Paul in 1988, though, said the skull had only three remaining premaxillary teeth. It had large eye sockets that were more than 25% of the skull's length, and it may have used its big eyes to hunt at night. The small skull means it would have been difficult for it to catch prey with its mouth, so it probably used its arms. It had strong arms. It could tuck its hands close to its body, similar to the way a bird holds its wing. In 2006, Phil Center did a biomechanical study using Ornitholestes casts, the right forelimb, to figure out its range of motion, and found that it could swing in a 95-degree range and could bend its elbow at a 53-degree angle, which is more acute than Manoraptor forearms, which can bend their forearms to 90 degrees but it's absent in primitive theropods like Coelophysis and Allosaurus. The forearm could not form a straight angle, so the forearm was permanently rotated upward. Hmm. And Ornitholestes may have used its forearms to grasp prey with both hands. Osborne described Ornitholestes as having, quote, rapid grasping power of hands and balancing power of its tail and large conical front teeth he saw as an adaptation to prey on contemporary birds. Then in 1917, Osborne suggested Ornitholestes was an early transition from carnivore to herbivore, but Charles Knight drew Ornitholestes chasing Archaeopteryx, and other illustrations like this have continued to appear. You can actually find that one on Wikimedia Commons. Paleo art is awesome. Yep, although that one will be marked as inaccurate. One of the reasons this is inaccurate is because Ornitholestes came from the western U.S. and Archaeopteryx is known from Central Europe. Yeah, that's a little ways away. Mm -hmm. Ornitholestes had a short body. It was about... 6.6 feet or 2 meters long, and it weighed about 33 pounds or 15 kilograms. It may have eaten birds, fish, small vertebrates, mammals, lizards, frogs, salamanders, hatchling dinosaurs, or it could have gone after other small theropods. If it hunted in packs, they may have been able to prey on a juvenile Camptosaurus. It probably ate about 1.5 pounds or 700 grams of food a day, and it may have been prey for larger theropods such as Ceratosaurus and Allosaurus. It had a short S-shaped neck and a long whip-like tail that was over half the length of its body, and it had long forelimbs, about two-thirds the length of its hind legs. It had fairly short hind legs. Osborne calculated that the shin bone was only 70% as long as the thigh bone. The shin bone was missing. Ornitholestes is thought to be a fast runner, but the lower leg bone's thought to be shorter than the femur, so it probably didn't chase after other small dinosaurs. In 1969, John Ostrom said that the innermost toe, digit number two, was larger than digits three and four, and that digit 2 may have had a modified sickle claw, like Deinonychus, but digit 2 is in poor condition, so it's hard to know for sure. Ornitholestes is depicted as having a small crest on its snout. This is thought to be for display, but more recently, scientists think that now there was no crest. It has a broken bone near the nostril that seems to bulge upward, which made Gregory S. Paul think it had a nasal horn, quote, rather like a chicken's comb in looks, end quote, according to his Predatory Dinosaurs of the World in 1988. But in 2003, Oliver W. M. Rahut, and in 2005, Kenneth Carpenter, said it didn't have a nasal horn, but that the bulge was from the skull being crushed after the dinosaur died. Yeah, that always seems like such a difficult thing to tell yeah. if it grew that way or if it got squished that way after it was buried. Yeah. 
Percy Lowe said in 1944 that Ornitholestes may have had feathers because of Cenosauroteryx, a primitive saurosaur found in 1996 that had fur-like feathers. Most paleontologists think all saurosaurs probably had some type of insulating feathers. John Foster in 2007 said Ornitholestes probably had more primitive feathers than birds, and it probably used it for insulation and possibly brooding eggs, and it would have covered most of the body. If Ornitholestes had feathers used for insulation, it probably had a fast metabolism and was pretty active. Because of its size, Ornitholestes was considered a saurosaur, but in 1986, Jacques Gauthier redefined saurosauria. Frederick von Huhn named the infraorder saurosauria in 1914. For a while, it was a tax and wastebasket for small theropods. But then in 1986, as I said, Jacques Gauthier redefined saurosauria. And in 1988, Gregory Paul said Ornitholestes had a similar skull to Proceratosaurus, which is a middle Jurassic theropod found in England, and he put the two together in Ornitholestinae, a subfamily of Allosauridae, but Protoceratosaurus is a Tyrannosaur, so this classification is untenable. Now Ornitholestes is considered a Silurosaurian, as defined by Gauthier, and some think it's the most primitive member of Manoraptora. The Silurosauria group is thought to be closer to birds than more primitive theropods such as Allosaurus. We've talked about Siluridae with Silurus in episode 56, and Silurosauria means hollow-tailed lizards. The clad includes theropods more closely related to birds than carnosaurs, and it, they may have appeared in the late Triassic, but many are known from the late Jurassic. Most feathered dinosaurs that were discovered are Silurosaurs. Silurosaurs have a sacrum, which is several vertebrae that attaches to the hips, which is longer than another dinosaur's, as well as a tail that stiffens towards the tip a bowed lower arm bone, and a tibia longer than the femur. 